Historical events are, in many ways, such a fragile thing. The great movements, revolutions, and eras of our past are often affected by something so simple. Everything we enjoy today can be broken down to an almost mundane decision that our ancestors made millennia ago. Is it fated for such things to occur? What small decision are we making now that will revolutionize human civilization forever? One cannot even begin to know such things. Much like our ancestors, the consequences of our choices as a species are often a mystery only to be revealed years after we have returned to the earth. One such decision that our ancestors make is the domestication of the horse. While the agricultural revolution played a major role in the development of human settlements and cities, one must also remember what humanity gained from domesticating animals. Dogs, also known as man's best friend, gave early humans security and companionship. Cattle, pigs, sheep, and goat provided a stable source of meat and leather. How important is an animal to domestication in the grand tale of human history? How is it that these symbiotic relationships with other animals change the course of human history? I put forth that the horse is the most important domesticated animal. So much so, in fact, that one would not be too hyperbolic to suggest that civilizations as we know it would not have developed and advanced at the pace that it did. And many civilizations that have had a major impact on human history may have never reached the size and influence that it did. Ranging from four to six feet, and 900 to 2,000 pounds, these noble creatures in many ways change the speed at which humanity would develop from simple settlements to massive kingdoms and empires. The domestication of the horse began within the 4th millennium, or 4000 BC, at the beginnings of the Bronze Age. We begin our story within the steppe lands north of the Black Sea from modern-day Kazakhstan and Ukraine. With DNA records, we can pinpoint perhaps the first people within the region to have successfully tame such a creature. The Batai people of the Asiatic Steppe are credited to being the first humans to domesticate and breed horses. Conventional thinking suggests that these early humans lived as nomads and perhaps sought out the horse as a means to assist with hunting. Out in the open plains, where stealth could at times be impossible due to a lack of forest and vegetation. Hunting a fast animal that you cannot sneak upon can be extremely difficult and taxing on human caloric energy. However, combine that hunter with a horse and a spear or a bow you now have a hunter that can chase down almost any prey. Whatever the reason, the Batai would go on to become experts in horse taming, riding, and breeding. The horse, as with many cultures in history, would become a significant part of theirs. However, one mystery continues to elude researchers. That is how horse domestication spread to other early human settlements. Did the Batai with their horses cross the steppe lands and teach other early human cultures how to tame this large animal and ride it? Or was it a process that other nomads within the steppes later learned on their own? Some researchers suggest that most likely the latter is true. DNA evidence of horses today do not match the DNA of horses remains found within the region where the Batai once lived. The full explanation of the origins of horse domestication may be lost to us, but what we do know 
is how the horse changed everything for our species. Let us first look at the surface level changes that a horse provides. For one, the average human can travel up to 20 to 30 miles in a day at a walking speed of 33 to 5 miles per hour. No small feat. However, we were extremely limited to the surrounding areas as making long treks over land at that pace can be dangerous for a single person or a migrating tribe, not to mention the cost and energy for the human itself. With the assistance of the horse, however, a human on horseback can now travel 30 to 40 miles in a day at a trotting speed of 8 to 12 miles per hour with little loss of energy from the human rider. This drastically changes travel for human beings. Now a rider can cover more ground and at a faster pace. Now humans can interact with other cultures and civilizations. And as these early humans who have mastered the horse interact, they also share culture, languages, and religions. Energy is the currency of civilizations. The more energy you can expend, the more you can do within your culture. The horse would provide early humans with a much larger output of energy. A horse can help plow a field for crops much faster than a human. This leads to greater yields in crop production as now humans can farm and manage more acres of land. This again is less of an energy cost to the human that simply directs the horse at it as it tills the field. Horses are also exceptionally good at hauling cargo, too large for a single human to carry. And as humans can increase carrying capacity, production and storage capacity for goods increases as well. This hauling ability also assists with travel as horses can carry far more supplies, thereby increasing survival on long journeys. Increase in weight capacity and travel ability would also create a new profession for our ancestors. That is the role of traders. These early entrepreneurs could now haul a large amount of excess goods and materials to conduct trade with other human settlements and cities. And as trade began to flow, so did the spread of ideas, culture, and communication. However, as is trademark with our species, we began to look at this new discovery and sought its use in the application of war. Small-scale warfare was nothing new for our ancestors. The fight for resources was always an ongoing struggle as raiding parties would attack settlements and tribes to obtain their goods. However, the horse would bring a new dynamic to the battlefield. Raiders like the Yamnaya warbands of modern day Ukraine, mounted on horseback, can cover more territory and swiftly leave when their raid is complete. Horse warriors would begin to appear more and more in cultures far beyond the Asiatic steppe. Other developments in the Bronze Age technology, such as bridles, saddles, and chariots, will transition common horse raiders into cavalry. These first cavalry units would be used for ranged warfare during battles, throwing spears and firing arrows to harass enemy soldiers. The application of cavalry would then change again as horses would soon be taught to ignore the cries of men in battle, to charge into their lines. The psychological terror of man on foot facing down a cavalry charge must have been overwhelming. Perhaps the first time in his life he sees a group of men riding great beasts galloping at full speed towards him. The terror of hearing the thundering hooves and unusual sounds of neighing horses accompanied by the war cries of their riders. 
the pain of having over 900 pounds of pure muscle crash into you and your comrades as the bite of the sword or spear of the horse warrior attempts to pierce your body. This would develop into shock in all tactics on the battlefield. The horse or cavalry will remain the most important and dominant part of any army up until World War I. That is about 4,000 years of their use in warfare. Mankind has made many advances in history. However, it seems clear that our history would look vastly different today without the domestication of the horse. I dare say, if the great empires of our past would have been possible without these noble and powerful creatures. Do you think civilization would be possible without the horse? What other facts about this topic would you like to share? Comment below and join the discussion. And if you wish to sub content like this, please leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.